On the esteemed day of Yom Kippur, October 6, 1973, a date revered in Judaism, serenity was shattered by a treacherous turn of events. Egypt, after ensnaring diplomatic pleasantries, unleashed a strategic surprise attack, catching Israel unprepared. Their jubilation swiftly transformed into a frantic struggle for survival. Over 200 Egyptian aircraft cast an ominous shadow over Israeli skies, heralding an impending storm of damage and destruction. The unsuspecting Israeli Air Force Base, Ophir, at Sharm El Sheikh, found itself targeted by a formidable enemy formation of 20 MiG-17s and 8 MiG-21s. Israel, faced with overwhelming odds, swiftly mobilized two F-4E Phantom II fighter jets to challenge the 28 menacing MiGs looming above. As the Israeli defenders ascended, they were met with a daunting spectacle, a multitude of adversaries ready for aerial combat. Despite the staggering odds, the two valiant pilots displayed unwavering resolve. They courageously engaged the swarm of enemy warplanes in a breathtaking aerial duel. Their selfless actions etched an indelible mark of valor in the annals of modern warfare. This momentous clash unfolded against the backdrop of the early 1970s, a time dominated by the Cold War's divide between the Eastern influence of the USSR and the Western helm held by the United States. In this geopolitical theater, the Middle East, with its strategic importance and abundant oil reserves, became a crucial chessboard. Post the Six-Day War of 1967, Israel held strategic territories, inciting envy and a quest for vengeance among many Arab states. Egypt and Syria, nursing their wounds from defeat, simmered with a desire to restore their lost honor. The scheme brewed in Cairo, masterminded by the bold and charismatic Egyptian president Anwar Sadat. Frustrated with the stalemate and tacitly encouraged by the Soviets, Sadat meticulously planned a surprise assault on Israel. Knowing direct confrontation posed great risks, he envisioned a grand deception leading to the Yom Kippur War, initiating peace gestures with Israel while orchestrating a massive military buildup funded by wealthy Arab states and armed by the Soviets, Sadat masked his true intentions. Syria, under Hafez al-Assad, joined forces with Egypt, secretly mobilizing troops and resources. They devised strategic ruses to mislead Israeli intelligence while concealing their actual attacking forces. Amid these intricate plans, Sadat chose Yom Kippur, the holiest day in Judaism, for the attack, capitalizing on Israel's perceived vulnerability. Despite intelligence indicating unusual military activities, Israel fell victim to the Egyptian and Syrian misinformation campaign. Days before the planned assault, Ashraf Marwan, a high-ranking Egyptian official turned double agent for Israel, provided a warning. However, the ambiguous message arrived too late, leading to indecision due to the risk of acting on uncertain intelligence. With the stage set, the clock ticking, and pieces in place, the Yom Kippur War was imminent. The simmering tensions were not solely the doing of the Arab nations, Israel's role, including the unfortunate incident of Libyan Arab Airlines Flight 114, added fuel to the escalating conflict. The fateful event of February 21, 1973, saw an unintentional incursion of a Libyan jet into the contested skies above the Sinai Peninsula controlled by Israel. Technical failure and a sandstorm led to the airliner being mistaken for a security threat. Attempted communication failed, culminating in the tragic downing of the commercial airliner and the loss of innocent lives. The international outcry following this incident painted Israel as an aggressive player, amplifying tensions in the region. This served as a catalyst for Egyptian President Anwar Sadat, adding credence to his narrative of Israeli aggression and justifying retaliatory military action. As tensions mounted, the Israel Air Force High Command prepared for the impending conflict. 
On the sacred day of Yom Kippur, war erupted in the skies over the Ophir base, housing a limited number of F4E phantoms and inexperienced crew led by Yaakov Yaknevo. The day of tranquility was shattered by a red alert in the morning, followed by a chilling siren at 1.50 p.m. Pilot Amir Nahumi, realizing the imminent threat, swiftly launched their jets into the hostile skies. With little information about the enemy force, they became the last line of defense. Nahumi's harrowing account vividly painted the picture of their courage. I decided to take off, and seconds later the runway was bombed. Had we waited any longer, we would have been unable to do so. There were seven four-ship formations of MiG-17s and MiG-21s. The ensuing clash saw the Israeli pilots facing an onslaught of MiGs, engaging in a breathtaking aerial duel. Nahumi and his comrade Shaki, displaying immense bravery and skill, maneuvered their aircraft to counter the overwhelming adversary. Their high-stakes aerial battle unfolded in a whirlwind of aerial assaults and evasive maneuvers. Despite the odds, Nahumi and Shaki managed to down seven Egyptian MiGs in less than six minutes, an extraordinary feat that forced the surviving enemy aircraft into retreat. Their valor and defiance against insurmountable odds earned Nahumi and Shaki the Distinguished Service Medal, a testament to their heroism. However, Differing narratives between Israel and Egypt persist to this day, each nation upholding their version of the historic Ophira air battle. General Furrington here, signing off. Remember history's tales of valor and courage echo through time, inspiring us all. Until next time, stay strong, stay courageous, and keep striving for greatness. Salute to those who soar above the clouds and face adversity head on. Over and out.